Hi and welcome to Vulcan from Zero to Hero. In this section, we are going to debug GPU. In this video, we are going to debug GPU using RenderDoc. Welcome back. In our previous video, we managed to debug our Vulkan codes via Vulkan validation layer. If you recall, in the very first section of these video courses, I've mentioned how to download RenderDoc. I assume that you download it and you set it up. Let's run it. Now that RenderDoc has started, we can load our desired layout from here. I prefer to use default layout, but you can select whatever you want. Here is event browser which shows the sequential of commands and the duration of execution time. This widget shows the API inspector. Here you see several tabs. The first one is texture viewer which is responsible for showing textures. The second tab is pipeline state, which shows all the stages of pipeline. As you can see, the first stage is vertex input. The next stage is vertex shader, tessellation control shader, tessellation evaluation shader, geometry shader, rasterizer stage, fragment shader, and compute shader. Let's go through the GPU stages in more details. Typically, our application is the place where we want to render geometry to the screen. This geometry can be defined by points, lines, triangles, quads, or triangle strips. These are the so-called geometric primitives, and each primitive contains vertices for example, a triangle contains three vertices. Each vertex can contain some information such as position, normal, texture coordinate, and etc. The purpose of the vertex input, or in other words, input assembler stage is to read primitive data from user field buffers and assemble the data into primitives that later will be used by the other vertex shader stage. The vertex shader stage processes vertices from the input assembler and performing per vertex operations. Vertex shader always operates on a single input vertex and produces a single output vertex. For example, if we have a triangle that contains three vertices, the vertex shader will be called three times. After vertex shader, we have tessellation stage. Tessellation breaks up high order surfaces into suitable structures for rendering. By implementing tessellation in hardware, a graphics pipeline can evaluate lower detail models and also render with higher details. The geometry shader stage is located after the vertex shader or tessellation in case we have used it. And right before the rasterizer and fragment shader stage. This is the latest stage of 3D pipeline that can manipulate geometry and modify the existing primitives. It can insert or remove primitives. Usually geometry shader is slow and is not used in modern rendering techniques. The rasterization stage determines which pixels of the viewport will need to be lit. The primitive is broken down into the composing fragments. These fragments are passed on the fragment shader stage. The fragment shader or pixel shader will be called for all fragments provided by rasterizer stage. The general role of the fragment shader is to calculate the shading function, a function that indicates how light will interact with the fragment, resulting in a desired color for the given fragment, meaning that the shader programs can run in parallel. After the color has been determined, this color is passed onto the fragment buffer so that 
it could be shown by front buffer and then front and back buffer will be swapped by swap chain. Okay, let's go back to the render doc. After pipeline state, the next step is mesh output. Usually this tab helps you to find what has been rendered by draw functions such as vk command draw. For example, if we are sure we've drawn our mesh primitives but can't actually see the mesh in our application, the first step is to check this tab. If you can find your mesh primitives here, this means there isn't any problem with your index buffer, vertex buffer and draw function. So it's better to check shader stages or anything else. This tab contains three sub tabs. The VS in are the inputted vertex gone into the vertex shader. VS out is the vertex that is generated by vertex shader. And GS out is the output vertex generated by geometry shader stage. The next step is launch application, in which we can select the desired application we want to debug, and then select the desired capture options which we would like to use in our screen capture. The rest of tabs contains information about resource inspector and error and warnings. Okay, let's launch an application here. Go to the bin folder and open draw triangle.exe from open dialog box. I need the following capture options. Select all full screen. Allow sync. Collect callbacks. Enable API validation. Capture child processes, capture all command lists, and finally select verify map function rights. Now press on launch button. And as you can see, the program that we've developed in last section is shown on the screen. As you can see, some texts are shown over our application. It shows information about number of frame, frames per second, actual time, and also shows the print screen keyboard can be used to capture a frame. Let's press print screen on your keyboard and capture a frame. Okay, now close the application and render doc is going to process this frame. Now in this first tab, I mean texture viewer, as you can see, there are some information at the bottom of the image. For example, type of this texture is BGRA uniform with 8 bits for each channel. And you can right click on every spot of this picture to pick pixel color. Let's go to the second tab which is pipeline state. Now I want to find vertex shader object. So let's check event browser and see what GPU did in that frame. The name of frame is 976. It means this is the 976th frame counting from the minute the application has started rendering. Let's see the color pass. In the color pass, the GPU began the command buffer. In the next step, the render pass begins. The next step is a draw function. Let's compare our code with render doc events. As you can see, the first step is begin command buffer, which happens in this line of our codes.
The beginning of render pass happens here. After setting viewport and viewport scissor, we have a draw method which is VK command draw function. And finally, ending render pass and command buffers are the final processes. The VKQ present KHR is the final step which executes command buffer. Now go back to the VK command draw function. In pipeline state tab, you can have access to graphics pipeline and shader module. Let's go to the next tab. You can see mesh output. Our mesh was a simple triangle. This tab helps a lot during debugging GPU, for example, for finding missing mesh, which is not visible in our game. Here is the inputted vertices and these are outputted vertices from vertex shader. Let's go to the vertex shader code. And here you can see the vertices that we use for rendering our triangle. As you can see, these are the same. Now go to the graphics pipeline from here and as you can see these shader modules are represented here and also here you can see the information of shader module. For example, we can see shader initialization parameters. Also you can edit our shader code here. This code is just the same as our shader code in our project. Again, go to the pipeline state and let's check rasterizer state. This state contains information about viewports and scissor regions. And in fragment shader stage, you can see code of fragment shader. This code should be the same as our code in project. In frame buffer, you can find information about swap chain images and depth buffer attachment. Information about type, width, height, depth array size and format. If any error happened, you should see logs of these errors in this tab. Because our program does not have any error, so this tab is empty. Also in the status bar, you can see a message saying that no problems were detected. One of the amazing features of GPU diagnostic tools such as RenderDoc is Timeline. It comes very handy, as you can see the exact execution time of each step. Let's enable duration time here and now you can see these execution times. It seems that the draw time takes too much time compared to other steps. In the next video, we are going to learn how to export 3D model from 3D Max.